Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the B segment of episode 46 of Codename Kids Next Door, Operation Matador. We begin this segment with number four entering an arena while wearing a matador outfit and holding a newspaper. An adult enters the arena shortly afterwards, but this adult is acting feral-minded. More specifically, this adult is acting like a bull. So number four and the adult participate in what essentially amounts to a bullfight. Uh, although this particular bullfight plays out like one out of Looney Tunes, with number four constantly one-upping the adult in many over-the-top ways, and the spectators are enjoying every second of it. Later on, we head to the office of the kid who runs this event. Um, a boy who looks a little older than number four. Number four calls the boy Ernie, but the boy insists on being called Ernest. Ernest pays number four by giving him three Yipper cards, numbers 10, 20, and 30 to be more specific. Ernest also inquires number four about if number four ever considers becoming a full-time bully, but number four says he's not interested in that sort of thing. Number four says that he's only in this for, in his words, the sport of it. Ernest doesn't seem to mind number four's answer, but he's more concerned about number four returning to the arena by nighttime because number four is supposed to participate in tonight's match. Number four assures Ernest that he will be there, and he also takes a moment to frustrate Ernest by calling him Ernie again, which succeeds. Later on, we're at the Sector V treehouse now, and number four returns to the central control room of the treehouse, but he finds his teammates are waiting for him. Number one inquires number four about where he's been, but number four tries to claim that he wasn't anywhere important, but number three reveals that they know that he's been participating in the bully matches. Number five also points out how number four is still wearing his matador outfit. Number four uh, brushes off his teammates' comments, saying that this is no different from when they fight adults for their missions for the kids next door. But his teammates clarify that there is a difference. The kids next door face off against evil adults, while the adults that are part of the bully matches are innocent adults that are trapped and force-fed coffee until they become feral-minded and unhinged. Number four still brushes off his teammates' comments, saying that they're wimps and that they're no better than his dad in that regard. But number one says it doesn't matter if number four agrees with them or not. Number four is still a member of the kids next door, which means his responsibilities to the organization come first. And number one says that all Sector V operatives will be needed for this particular mission. Soccer Mom, a villain who is forcing kids to play soccer 24-7, is arranging a night game. Yes, Soccer Mom is holding a night game tonight, so that's what the Sector V operative's uh, latest mission will be. And number four grows nervous when he hears that the mission is tonight, which, uh, although, yes. So number four acts nervous, but he tries to claim it's not a problem when number one suspiciously inquires him about if it will be a problem. So when the rest of the teammates, the rest of the Sector V operatives, leave the room, Number 4 grumbles to himself about why the mission had to be tonight of all nights. Nighttime eventually rolls around, and we see the Sector V operatives leaving in a flying vehicle to face off against Soccer Mom. We also see the Bully Fights Arena, where the spectators are growing impatient and they're starting to throw items in the arena. Ernest is wondering what's taking number four so long. Back with the Sector V operatives, they arrive at the area where Soccer Mom is holding the night game, but then suddenly multiple soccer balls are attacking the flying vehicle. Uh, number one instructs number two to begin evasive maneuvers, and he instructs number four to activate the defense system. 
but soon enough the rest of the sector v operatives see that number four is not with them there's only a dummy in number four's place eventually the soccer balls are able to uh, cause enough damage to the flying vehicle that the flying vehicle begins to crash land uh, back at the bully matches arena Ernest sees number four has arrived and Ernest begins to yell at number four for what took him so long but number four tells Ernest to calm down while calling him Ernie saying that all that matters is that he's here now Ernest doesn't take too kindly to this and he begins to threaten number four but number four pretty much tempts Ernest into finishing his threat Ernest doesn't have an answer for this and just yells at number four to get into the arena and begin the match number four however is quickly surprised when he sees who the uh, who the adult is for this particular match the adult is none other than his own father Sidney Beatles and yes Sidney is now is now in a feral-minded and unhinged state right now Number four tries to reason with his dad, but Sidney doesn't seem to recognize number four in his uh, feral-minded state and charges towards number four and even um, has knocked number four to the ground. Number four, though, tries to snap Sidney out of this by slapping Sidney, and it works. Sidney is back in his normal mind state, and he's surprised to see his son there, he inquires his son about where they are exactly, and number four quickly explains that they're in the bully fights and that uh, Sydney is the bull. But Sydney says he doesn't understand why he would fight his son. He loves his son, and number four appreciates hearing this. The spectators, though, are getting impatient. They want to see a fight, and they're beginning to uh, encourage number four and his dad to start the fighting again. But number four tells his dad that they should leave. Ernest, though, is not happy about this. Ernest says that he didn't think number four would, um, would give up this way. But number four says that his teammates were right about the bully fights, after all. Ernest says that doesn't really matter. He, uh, number four was, is scheduled to participate in a match tonight, and he's going to give the spectators a fight one way or another. Number four, though, says that Ernest won't be able to take him, number four, on in a fight. But Ernest says it, that doesn't matter. He won't have to because the spectators are uh, going to fight number four. So number four and his dad quickly rush into one of the uh, pathways into the arena. And they, you, they close the gate to keep, to keep um, Ernest and the spectators out. Uh, number four questions his dad about any other ways out. But Sydney explains there is no other way out from this particular room. Uh, number four sees that there are cages with other dads um, trapped, and they're in their they're in the feral-minded and unhinged states right now. Um, Sydney explains that um, that all of these dads had signed up for a be a good dad seminar, but this was a trap in order to um, get them. Uh, to get them to force feed them coffee to put them in this state for the bully matches and number four is really sad to hear this soon enough though some of the spectators are able to lift up the gate so that they can enter the room but number four tells his dad he has a plan so number four and his dad end up freeing the other dads that are trapped in the cages and because of their unhinged and uh, feral-minded states um, the adults uh, are charging towards Ernest and the spectators who are forced to run away. Number four and his dad are riding on top of these adults. And um, yes, they're able to escape the arena while also chasing away Ernest and the spectators. Meanwhile, we cut to the, sec the rest of the Sector V operatives. Um, number two, number three, and number five are trapped in a soccer net while number one is... Um, Yes, uh, number one has been buried up to his neck to the ground. So number one's head is all that's visible above ground right now. And number one's head has been painted to look like a soccer ball. Number five tries to contact other Kids Next Door operatives for help. But uh, Soccer Mom interrupts the call. And um, she's trying to convince one of the kids to kick number one's head for... Um, 
um, for soccer practice, but the kids say they don't want to kick the ball. They want to be with their dads. And soccer mom is infuriated by this. She decides that she'll make the uh, she'll make the first practice run then. But before soccer mom can uh, hit number one, um, she and the others present notice that um, number four Sydney and the um, and the dads that are in the feral minded state right now are coming onto this um, soccer arena, or they're charging into this uh, soccer arena, which manages to stop soccer mom. A little while later, more Kids Next Door operatives have arrived, and, they, um, and they're taking uh, Soccer Mom into a vehicle to be taken to custody. Uh, meanwhile, it turns out the dads that were stuck for the bully matches were actually the dads... Yes, the dads that were trapped for the bully matches are actually the dads of the kids that Soccer Mom had captured to force to play soccer 24-7. So the dads are no longer in their unhinged or feral-minded states, and um, they're back to normal now, and they're happy to be reunited with their kids. Number four is talking to most of his teammates, and he admits that uh, they were right about the bully matches, and it was wrong for him to abandon the mission for the bully matches, but he hopes that uh, him freeing the dads from the bully matches and stopping soccer mom should count uh, for something important. And number five does say that, yes, that does count for something, but she says it's only barely so to number four. Number four then notices number one, but he doesn't see number one's face. He only sees the back of number one's head, which is still painted to look like a soccer ball. So number four decides to kick the soccer ball, not realizing that the soccer ball is actually number one's head. We cut to a later a later time, maybe the next day, where number four and Sydney are in their backyard right now. Number four is practicing with a soccer ball while Sydney is reading the newspaper. But then Sydney suggests that number four and uh, him, Sydney, reenact the um, the bully matches just for fun. So yes, number four takes the uh, newspaper and uh, Sydney pretends to act like a bull. And the the father son duo of the Beatles family are, or yes, the Beatles father son duo are uh, having fun. But then. The, but then some of the spectators from the bully matches see them and then begin to chase after them. So the segment ends with number four and his dad trying to escape from the spectators that are chasing after them. So this segment is another number four spotlight appearance, and there are some notable details for this particular segment. Probably the most notable of details is that this segment marks the first time when number four's dad's face is shown. So yes, we now know what Sidney Beatles' face looks like. Although for most of the segment he appears in, Sidney doesn't have his usual design to his face because of the uh, effects of being uh, force-fed coffee. It's not until the, um, the scene that plays alongside the end credits, that's when we get to see number four's dad with his usual face design. But yes, yeah, so this segment marks uh, Sydney's the first time we see Sydney's face. And this segment also introduces us to two villains, uh, one of them being a kid villain and the other being uh, an adult villain. In the case of the kid villain, we have Ernest. And yes, I did mention before that while Toilinator could be considered number four's arch enemy, or Toilinator does regard number four to be his arch enemy, but number four seems, or the arch enemy status seems to be one sided on Toilinator's part. I did mention that there would be another villain who could be considered number four's arch enemy in a more mutual way. And yes, Ernest would be that particular villain. Ernest could be considered number four's arch enemy. And Tom Warburton did comment on one of his blog posts about how. Um, Dave Wittenberg, the voice for Ernest, uh, gave such a great performance, or they had Dave Wittenberg try out for Ernest and they really enjoyed the performance, so much so that Tom Warburton was inspired to have Dave Wittenberg play several other characters in the show. And one of these characters is a Kids Next Door operative who ends up becoming 
much more important than one would probably expect when they first appeared. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this particular Kids Next Door operative appears by the end of season four, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll cross that bridge when we eventually get to it. But yes, this Ernest is not the only character that Dave Wittenberg plays on the show. And this isn't the only time Ernest appears too. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Ernest has at least one other appearance. I believe that's in season five, if I'm not mistaken. But yes, um, we'll be sure to talk more about uh, Ernest's next appearance when it happens. Now, the other villain who appears is Soccer Mom. And I don't believe Soccer Mom ever gets to be the focus villain for an entry, or she doesn't get to be the sole villain of an entry, because there is a later entry where Soccer Mom does get to be one of the major villains in that particular entry. But I don't think she ever gets to be the sole villain, uh, the only focus villain for an entry. But yes, yeah, Soccer Mom will get to have a fairly more important role compared to this segment, even if she shares the spotlight with some other adult villains. Oh, and speaking of adult villains, this segment actually helps to highlight um, season one's early installment weirdness. I have mentioned before in previous Recap and Thoughts videos that um, season one definitely stands out for being very different compared to the rest of the series. And most people would say that the way the Sector V operatives act in Season 1 is one such example. Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily want to call them villain protagonists during Season 1, but yes, in Season 1, the Sector V operatives do come off less heroic compared to how they do in the rest of the series. Or yes, they come off as much more heroic in later seasons compared to Season 1. And in Season 1, there were some times where the Sector V operatives did act rather dismissive towards um, good adult characters. Um, Operation Teeth stands out as an example to me off the top of my head. Whereas in this segment, uh, the yes, uh, most of the Sector V operatives do clarify that they face off against evil adults and they don't have any problems with uh, innocent adults. They actually don't like uh, the bully fights because of how they um, trap and force feed in coffee to innocent adults. So that definitely, yeah, like I said, that definitely stands out because in season one, um, the Sector V operatives did come off less heroic and a bit bratty at times, but here they do come off as being much more heroic in comparison, and they do have standards. They don't have an agenda against all adults, just the bad adults. So that does help to highlight um, that early installment weirdness from season one. So otherwise, yeah, I think that, m or I guess one more detail is this won't be the only segment that deals with bullies in significant ways. There's actually an entry from I believe it's in season five, but there is an entry about bullies and number four's um, connection with bullies, so to speak. We'll go into greater detail about that once we reach that particular recap and thoughts video. But otherwise, yes, I believe that's about it. So we got ourselves another number four spotlight appearance that also shows Sidney Beatle's face for the first time. And we also get to meet a villain who could be considered number four's arch enemy. Otherwise, though, yes, I believe that's it. So as of this video, we've now discussed the B segment of episode 46 of Codename Kids Next Door on this channel. Take care, and until next time.